Today I'm sharing a tour of my entire houseplant collection consisting of over a few hundred plants. So today I'm sharing my entire houseplant collection and I don't know exactly how many plants I have at this point, but I would definitely say at least a few hundred house plants. So here I am in my entryway, and as you can see, I don't have a lot of plants behind me. And the reason for that is I tend to keep the common areas somewhat minimalist of plants, you know, the areas that I share with my friends and my family. So the plants that I do have here, I like them to stay somewhat small, unlike some of the other plants in my home where I really love those like, you know, super jungly vibes. So this first plant here is a philodendron micans, and it's definitely a favorite amongst the plant community. Now, sometimes we want our plants that we purchase from the store to be like, ab grow absolutely huge, but sometimes we want the plant that we purchase to stay that same size and not get huge. And that's how I feel about these plants in my entryway. I don't necessarily want them to go absolutely crazy. So the lower light, um, that these plants get definitely helps keep them smaller and the other thing that I do is prune them I'm like constantly chopping them and you can propagate them and put them in water you know the cuttings and that kind of thing um, but the chopping actually uh, helps make them bushier which is really nice you know I don't mind them to get bushy just not absolutely massive and uh, I also keep them in smaller, small nursery pots, which really slows that growth down. And even though I'm taking all of these measures to keep the plant small, this philodendron micans grows like a weed. It's just a really, really prolific grower. But I have found that these philodendron micans in, in higher light don't have that prolific growth. The velvetiness of these leaves are absolutely beautiful and it's really easy to propagate. As you can see, the top doesn't have like any growth happening. I could put more plants in and help make that bushier or put more light on there and that would help make it bushier, but I don't mind at all. I really do have it primarily as a, a vining plant. And this pot I got from thrifting, I have, most of my pots I actually get from thrift shops and Goodwill, that kind of thing. This one was $1.99 and it's kind of unique looking, I think. Um, but the only thing is I have noticed a lot of these thrift shops have been like jacking their prices up lately. And sometimes it's more expensive at Goodwill than it is at like some of these other shops. So this plant here is called a Scandapsis Pictus Exotica. I've also heard it, seen it called a Silver Satin. And really all the Scandapsis Pictus varieties are so great because they're very easy care and they're so lush. I have quite a, I have a few different ones in my collection. And I also try not to duplicate plants and I try to only have one kind of each plant, which is really hard to do when you really, really love a certain plant. You want to get like 10 of them or propagate a bunch of them. And I've been trying to limit myself, but the Scandapsis Pictus Exotica, I do have a couple of those. Now this is a Mandula Pothos. This is a great Pothos. It is still, I think, to, considered somewhat uncommon, even though I did find this one at a big box shop. I think I found it at Lowe's or Home Depot and it was probably like seven or eight dollars. So definitely not rare, but you don't see it everywhere. And it also depends where you live in the country or where you live in the world. So Manjula Pothos, one time, I think someone from Australia commented that like they have a really hard time finding Manjula Pothos and it's expensive. Now, I don't know if that's still the case because that was a while ago. Um, we have such a, a worldwide community here on this channel which is the, just like the coolest thing ever. So I love hearing about where you live and what the plants are like versus here. But Mandula pothos is a slower grower. Um, this plant has not really grown at all since I got it. Isn't it so beautiful? And it also has like silver on the leaves. It just makes me really happy. So I'm a big fan of the Mandula pothos, but I think if you wanted it to grow big, you would need to give it a, a substantial amount of light. And I have seen people growing them on like moss poles and planks and then they get really, really big leaves. But I'm cool with it just like staying small and doing its thing.
Now coming into the bar slash music room slash dining room, and um, this is a philodendron Rojo Congo, and I 10 out of 10 recommend this plant. It has grown so much. The gorgeous red leaves that come out are stunning. And I think I got this I got this one on sale. I think it was $19 from a Home Depot. I got a steal on it and it's been great. It's putting out this newest leaf and it gets some light from this window here. And it's actually putting out a flower. Now this is a Pilea peperomioides. It was in another area of my house and it was not happy at all. And this is such a neat plant. I, it's also called like a UFO plant because of the shape of the leaves. This is such a cool plant. I definitely recommend them. And when they start to like put out little pups and all that, as you can see in this one, it's really full. I just don't think it liked the spot. So I'm trying out this spot over here where it will definitely get more light and I can stay on top of watering it a little bit better. I've been seeing these at big box shops even for like 15, 20 bucks. This one is a Hoya Carnosa and it's a Crimson Queen and it's absolutely beautiful. I'm obsessed with this, with this plant. I, you'll probably hear me say that a lot. So, um, you know, maybe take a sip of your drink every time I say I'm obsessed with the plant. But uh, yeah, this is such a fabulous one. The longer I'm into plant collecting, like the more appreciative I am of Hoyas. I absolutely love them. This is a really easy plant. I'd say any of the Hoya carnosas, with the exception of the compacta, are very easy to care for and just absolutely beautiful. And the Hoyas have these like really thick succulenty leaves. Um, and again, this is like a somewhat lowerish light area and this plant does great. Um, I got this little pot thrifting and it's actually a candle holder, I think, but I love the way it looks. These plants are just absolutely beautiful. And I think it looks really cute over here on the table. It's just chilling. So this is a beautiful snake plant. I'm not exactly sure the variety, um, but it's a stunner. You know, it's so easy. It requires nothing. I mean, I, I'm in love with snake plants. You'll see them throughout my house. And I also got this cool little basket from Ikea. I know they're less than $20 for one of these baskets. And so if you have a large size plant and you don't wanna spend a lot of money on a, on a, a ceramic pot, but you want it to look nice and kind of go with the flow of your decor, I find that these little baskets work great on those bigger plants. This little cutie over here is my ZZ Zenzi. It's a dwarf ZZ, so it's very compact, it's slow growing, and it has really thick, chunky leaves. And you know, I actually saw one at, a couple of them at Lowe's recently, and I think they were about $20, and it came with a really nice pot in one of my plant shopping videos recently. Look how cute it is. I love these little, just these ZZ Zenzis I'm addicted to. And they just have like kind of thicker stems and like little chunky leaves. Just really beautiful. The main reason I haven't filmed a houseplant tour in so long is that I had a horrible thrips outbreak last year, which all but wiped out a lot of my plants. A lot of my small plants didn't make it and then my larger plants um, didn't have any new growth and then a lot of the beautiful big leaves died off and I had to trim them back. And I'm to the point now where it's under control and managing it mainly with systemic granules as a huge help. You will see on a lot of my plants, especially my larger plants, not much growth from the last time I filmed a plant tour. Just wanted to give a heads up on what's been going on. However, I did see some new growth this year, so I, that was a big celebration for me. This is a philodendron warshawesii, and the Soltech Solutions grow lights honestly like have saved a lot of my plants. Whatever it takes to make this plant happy, I will do it because, I mean, come on, look at those leaves. They're just the most beautiful leaves and they're very thin. So it does require regular watering. You don't wanna let it dry out too much. If you have a plant that has very thin leaves, it will need to be right, watered more regularly. And if you have a plant that has like more thick leaves, those leaves can retain more water. So this plant's awesome. I love the wild and free aerial roots and it's really uh, loving the Soltech Solution Grow Light in the winter time. 
And then over here I have a philodendron pink princess. I got this one with the Costa Farms, like at the very, very beginning of when they started releasing these into big box shops. One of the reasons why I put it under the Soltec Solutions grow lights is because um, the extra light will help promote the variegation. So, you know, it's she's so cute and bushy. I actually like really, really like this plant. And even though it doesn't have a lot of variegation, I still really love those red leaves. I think it's, she's a stunner. And I just put these under the grow light um, maybe a couple weeks ago. So I'm excited to see what happens this winter, if they put out any new growth or not. You will see a lot of grow lights in my house. I have used all different kinds. I'll be talking about all the different ones I used today. And um, none of this is sponsored, but I do have a code if you're interested in the Soltech Solution Grow Lights because they are the best ones. In my, in my opinion, there's lots of really, really great ones, but these are my favorites and they're really good quality, which means they're more expensive than some other grow lights, but you can get 15% off with my code. I'll put it on the screen here because I can't remember what it is, but 15% off is a good deal. And you'll see the, um, the results, especially up in my plant room. It's been awesome. So this beautiful philodendron on my dining room I think it's called a ring of fire gold. And I have, I like to collect all of these, the varieties of this type of philodendron. It has the elongated leaves with the serrated um, look on the sides. And I just, they're just, for me, they grow so great. They require nothing. They're really easy care. They're hardy. And I love that there's so many different varieties of them in different colors and you'll see them as I go through my house. So this one is a really lime green color and it's put out a lot of new growth. It has a new leaf coming out here. It's happy as can be. And I got this little cover pot um, while I was thrifting. I think it's a candle holder, but I love the color of it. And then in here I have it in one of the little clear pots that I love to use. So then over here, I have a beautiful Adansonii that I love. This is such a great uh, uh, Monstera. And I actually think I wanna put it in another spot. I think I wanna put it in my living room and let it climb up, my, um, climb up the wall where I have a different plant climbing up the wall. But it's just so easy, great, great grower. I've kept it small on purpose, but I think I have some plans with this. This is my philodendron gloriosum. Um, it used to be absolutely massive until all the stuff that went down this past year. However, I repotted it, it's been treated, got rid of the pests and look, it's putting out a new leaf. And gloriosums are pretty hardy. So I'm, uh, I'm really looking forward and hopeful for this plant to become huge. And I am going to get a long pot for it because they're crawling philodendrons and I want it to be able to crawl and that'll just make it extra, extra happy in its pot. Up here I have some alocasia that were outside this year and I just have them near these windows so they can get a bunch of light. Hopefully just power through the winter time so I can put them back outside in the summer. And this one is a variegated alocasia and as you can see she's just decided she wants to do a lot of all white leaves which looks really beautiful however those all white leaves don't help the plant in any way because they don't have chlorophyll and they can't really do much photosynthesis oh and this one i found at the raleigh farmers market and it was 89 dollars, which was a steal and it's still putting out growth just like a lot smaller leaves because it doesn't have all that humidity and and light that it had outdoors um if you want to keep alocasia happy give them a ton of humidity and a ton of light and they'll be your best friend just watch out for spider mites you know stay on top of prevention this is another just little cutie that i got that i thought had variegation from the big box shop I got it for ten dollars and it's just beautiful this is an alocasia poly and this one for sure has had variegation there were two plants in this pot and as you can see, I had to trim this one back because all the leaves died. And this is the plant that all the variegated leaves are on, of course. I'm hoping it's just gone dormant and it will come back next year. But I do see some like little corms off of it. So I think what I'm gonna do is like pull off some of these corms and then pot those up. And hopefully it will retain the variegation because this one doesn't have any variegation, but it's still a beautiful plant. So I'm you know, obviously gonna hold on to it. 
The variegated Hoya carnosa compactas are slow growers. The more green they have, the better growers they'll be. The more white they have, the slower growers that slower growing that they'll be. Um, but this one has been just riddled with mealybugs and pests and all sorts of stuff. And so I just treat it and let it live outdoors in the summertime. And then, so these are like my, like, this is my little just, you guys are great, but you live outdoors mainly. And I'm just gonna keep you away from as many plants as I can. So they just live in here. And then when I have my plants set up, I try to make them so that they don't touch each other as much as possible um, to help prevent spreading of any potential pests that may happen. And then over here I have um, my beautiful uh, philodendron McDowell. You can see a lot of the damage that it endured this past year. It still has those leaves and you know, I don't mind that they look a little bit scarred up and have some problems, you know, relatable. We all have our, <laughs> we all have our past and those leaves are still serving a great function for the plant and it is putting out new growth. Um, it was still dealing with some pests and that meant that the new leaf that recently unfurled struggled to, when it came out and it tore as it was unfurling. But um, I've managed to get the pests under control again and it's like half of the leaf looks okay. It's still serving the plant. And then over here, um, it's about to put out another leaf. I still like, I love this plant so much. And when she's in all her glory, I mean, it's really a sight to behold. This gets strong morning light and morning light is great, even if it's direct. I know bright and direct light is like the holy grail and it really is, but that, in, that includes dappled sunlight or, you know, even bright morning light is fine for most plants. So that's, you know, she just loves it here. This is a philodendron golden dragon and it's in sphagnum moss inside this like glass pot and it does all right. Um, I wouldn't recommend this. I just thought it looked so cool. I loved the look of it when I did it and it's, you know, survived it and it has put out new leaves and new growth, but it's not ideal for a philodendron. You know, they prefer um, to have a bit more airflow, but the sphagnum moss does allow it to have good airflow and the roots look okay. Philodendron golden dragons are beautiful plants and the um, shape of it is like the shape of a dragon. Like, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So coming into the kitchen area and then the living room, this is a ring of fire philodendron. It's similar to the ring of fire gold that I have, but this one has really variegated leaves and it's just as easy care as the other one. Here's the little half moon leaf that it's put out. Um, the, if it gets a lot of sunlight, it gets kind of lighter leaves and less sunlight, it puts out darker leaves. It does have like a pink, a somewhat pink hue to the leaves. So this is a whale fin snake plant. I, it's my favorite snake plant. At first it just has like the one leaf and that's my favorite look for a whale fin snake plant, which was what it looked like when I originally got it. But since then it's put out this leaf, which doesn't have the whale fin look, but then also put out this leaf, which does have it. And they're so easy to propagate. I would just take this um, plant out and then just kind of cut it where it's connected to the mother plant in the rhizomes in its roots and just stick that into soil. And then I have a whole new snake plant. And I've had a lot of success with propagating snake plants, but yeah, uh, whale fin's my favorite. This one next to it is also a whale fin, but it's a variegated whale fin. So it has some uh, like white on the leaves or some light green or cream. And this was a propagation off of another variegated whale fin that I have. And it's so cute. It was just like this one little baby leaf sticking out. And since then it's put out this whole other leaf. And I will say I've been really pleasantly surprised with how quickly the whale fins grow. Cause some snake plants aren't fast growers, but these whale fins are super fast growers. And uh, I have it in the terracotta, which is great for whale fins, but I actually have it in one of my little orchid tots so I can keep an eye on it and exchange out cover pots as needed. There's nothing more rewarding than propagating a plant, not knowing how it's gonna turn out. And then you have like a whole new beautiful house plant. Here on the window ledge in the kitchen, I keep some astrophytum and I'm not sure what all the different varieties are called, but astrophytum are my favorite type of cacti. 
so I try to collect as many as I can. This one here is my most recent one that I got. I love the way it looks like a little pillow. This one's really cool as well, and it has some big spines. This one has no spines, and it's just solid green. And then this one has some spines like that second one, but a lot more of the little dots on it. So this one, I'm not sure exactly what variety it is. I think it's the same as the one in our little bar area, but I love this pot because you know what, no matter what, our snake plants will survive. And this is all new growth. All the light green is all new growth recently. So it's super happy. This is a Pothos Enjoy and I got it from a grocery store for about $10 and it just lives up here on my fridge. I see that it had some leaves that recently died coming into the colder months, but it's great. I do keep it small. I trim it back um, from time to time. Um, it's not a super fast grower. It just kind of, you know, keeps a steady pace, but it's a fabulous Pothos. <laughs> Aw, come say hi. Here you go, mama. Ooh. This is Claire. We have all sorts of uh, plant shopping adventures together. Um, this is a Monstera Thai constellation. And I think all of these leaves have been new this year, like all four of them. Um, and there's even like a new one starting as well. And you can see like the like the part that's very extremely variegated kind of just over time turns brown and I've just um, peeled the brown part off the crisping. So I prefer when it's mostly green with just like specks of white here. You can see this part here. I think for that to not have for that to not happen, you have to have really, really, really high humidity. And even though we have like 65% here, um, it doesn't seem to be enough for the extremely variegated leaves. I would have multiple of these plants and I'm, it's really exciting to see that they're coming onto the market nowadays and they're much more affordable. This is a really beautiful angel wing begonia. You can tell it's um, grown from this grower called Harmony's begonias. And uh, I know it is because all of her begonias have silver tips on the end. And I just found that out like recently within the last few weeks, you can see it has like the little silver tip here on the end. And now I'm obsessed and I have a problem and I wanna get all of the begonias with the silver tips on the ends. But I don't know which variety this is. Um, it's not labeled, but it's so beautiful. Like I love how it's all pointy on the end here and the shape of it. It's just so beautiful. I love the little spots on it. I think I got this one, it was like $14. Let me check. Yeah, $14.99. And it's just a stunner. And I really love this pot that it's in as well. So here in my living room is probably where I have the most plants downstairs. So I have this little propagation stand here. I think it's adorable. And I have two plants in here. The first one is a Syngonium Wenlandii. It's so velvety and beautiful. And I love that white streak down the leaf. Like look how, velvety and green that is. And uh, then this one is a beautiful begonia. I know it begins with a B, I'll put the name of it here. And it is such a beautiful bright pink color, um, but it had become so leggy. It was just like one leg with this little, these few leaves on the top. It was a few feet tall with just like one stem and, and these leaves. So I decided to propagate it. It should start um, rooting up pretty soon. And this one loves humidity. You can see it's been crisping. It's crisped up a bit, but you know, each leaf, it seems like less and less crispy. And then this new leaf, you know, seems a little bit better. Maybe over time it would start to crisp up, but it's worth it. It's just so beautiful. I just, those pink leaves. I mean, there's no other begonia quite like this one. This huge Monstera Deliciosa is one of my favorites, and um, it has put out a lot of new leaves this year. It did suffer from thrips, but even so, it still has done like an amazing, amazing recovery. And this plant loves to put out like three leaves at the same time. Every time it's like three brand new leaves. It's so rewarding. And like you can see right here, it has a new leaf coming out here, a new leaf coming out here, and... 
I don't know, maybe it's only two leaves this time, but I mean, I just love this plant so much. And uh, this is one of those that I want it to grow huge, huge, huge. So I'm thinking I might get one of those Soltec Solution grow lights. And then over here I have, um, this is a ZZ plant. It's the chameleon ZZ plant, which I think was newer this year to the market. I got it from a big box shop for $20 as part of the um, Trending Tropical collection. And these are one of those uncommon ZZ plants because it has like a little bit of variegation, but then over time it does get the solid green leaves. Absolutely beautiful. So this pot I actually found thrifting. I absolutely love it. And then this one is just a little snake plant. I think it looks cool in the little, you know, head pot. This was a propagation that I did and it's just taken off. This is a confetti syngonium. I absolutely love the syngonium, always have. I'm a sucker for anything that has like pink splashes on the leaves or pink on the leaves at all. And this definitely has that. And some of the leaves will even have like a whole side of pink. I mean, they're such cool plants and they used to be impossible to find, very expensive. And now you can find them. I mean, I'm seeing that them at grocery stores and stuff for $10, $15. And this one I liked because it came in this little glass pot um, and it's just, you know, in water. So this plant is a Raphidophora hayi and you can see like it's a shingling plant and this is the original pot I got it in from Costa Farms and it came with this little plank. This is how tall it was. It literally wasn't even all the way up to here when I first got it. Like it was just like that. And <laughs> since then, I just put it on here because I was like, oh, maybe it'll grow up the wall. Like, who knows? And since then, it's done that. And it's done all of this, which is, you know, really cool that it's grown that much. And I enjoy having a climbing plant here, but I, um, so it's very fast growing. However, I'm not crazy on how tiny the leaves became. And it's probably because it's for this plant not getting enough light over here. And I really, like I said, enjoy having a plant over here. So I think I may replace this one with an Adansonii. And just like put the Adansonii that I showed previously and put it here and just let the Adansonii climb up. Because I think those do a bit better in this lighting. But yeah, if you're looking for, like I always say when I go plant shopping and I see this plant, I always tell people like, hey, it's fast growing. Like it's a great, great plant if you want a quick grower. Um, because I mean, just in a week, it'll put out like this much. I've chopped this one back a number of times as well. But like it does weird stuff. Like it'll grow for a bit and then it'll do little leaves and then razor leaves. And then, I mean, she's got a mind of her own and I'm all about wild and free. So you know, oh, you can see I, I have my ring light because it's so stormy. <laughs> There's like a huge storm passing through, so it's a bit dark. Um, and I wanted everyone to be able to, you know, see the plants. So this is a, a Zipilinum, I believe. And this is a great, beautiful plant. It's fussy, though. Like, she is fussy, but I love her. I bought her and she was a large size when I got her. I mean, she has grown a lot since then, actually, but she's fussy. She's particular about the kind of light she likes. She's particular about how often to water her. She's thirsty. Um, she's fussy if she doesn't get watered in time. She get does get spider mites from time to time, um, but she's beautiful. So this is the newest leaf. So I'm hoping that one like, you know, it looks like it's a good size and she'll just continue to grow. So this is a great plant and I just love it. So I put up with her fussiness, but I have to have her in the main living area. Otherwise, I, you know, I, I'm in fear that I'll forget about her um, and not give her water as needed. And like, if she doesn't get water, she just like instantly crisps up and turns brown. So, but she's a beauty. Here on my coffee table is a philodendron birkin. And I love this plant. Like, I just love it so much. It's so easy. Just give them some water. They're really um, tolerant of lower light. They're good in higher light. If they get really, really bright light, these um, leaves turn a really white color. If they're in lower light, they turn more of a green color. In here, it gets like um, medium light. 
and they're just so easy. I never, it wasn't like the first plant that I was gra I gravitated toward when they were super, super popular back in the day. But now I wonder like why I didn't because um, it's literally given me no issues and it's so pretty. This is called a tiger fern and it is so beautiful. And you can see just off the bat, like it has this beautiful lime green color. But if you look up close, it actually has a striped pattern to the leaves, but it actually has variegation on the leaves. And it's just, I just think it's so unique and so stunning. Um, and it is definitely a regular fern in that it does enjoy humidity. And if you leave it to like dry out for too long, it definitely gets crispy. Um, and it will grow towards the light. So you can see like this side doesn't have any leaves and this one has a lot, but I'm totally fine with it. I actually really love the way that it looks. Now I'm not exactly sure what type of philodendron this is. It's labeled as a pastazanum silver. Um, it was $22. But I think that this one may be a Plowmanii, and I'm basing that on the stem. In addition to the leaf, actually, you can see the stem looks like very Plowmanii. And the leaf, too, is very Plowmanii, except it looks, um, it looks to me, based on my research, like a dark form, nar dark, narrow form Plowmanii, which from what I can tell is uncommon, and I don't know if this is one of those, but I fell in love with these leaves. Like they're so dark, so silvery. I love the interesting texture of those leaves. It has like kind of a pillowy, um, ruffly texture to it. And it is putting out a new leaf, which is really exciting. It's absolutely beautiful. It's one of the newer plants in my collection. This is a booby cactus. I absolutely love it. And it also has, I don't know if you can tell, it has a little booby pot to go along with it. And it's very obvious why the nickname for this cactus is a booby cactus. And they're so cool. They have like this really blue color to them. Like don't touch it because anywhere you touch it, the blue like instantly, instantly comes off. They have been very expensive in the past. I'm starting to see them come out more um, often at plant nurseries and plant shops. They're around $100 for a good sized one. Um, these were like $100 for a little baby one when I got mine. So hopefully the prices will continue to come down. This one's pretty cool too. It's called a silver dollar vine. This is why it's called a silver, silver dollar vine is because it looks like a silver dollar. Originally I got this one for $18. It still has the price on there. And all of this is new growth, which who knew that this would be a good grower. I feel like I've gotten better at succulent care over the years. And I love this little pot. I got this one from Cactus Club. They have really, really great terracotta pots. A lot of the plants that I have, I purchased from Cactus Club and I started partnering with them. So I do have a link in the description, um, you know, cause they have a lot of great plants for sale online and they're terrific at shipping. So, you know, if you're on the hunt for some cool house plants, I definitely recommend taking a look at that. This is a cutting of a, uh, it's a pothos, but it's a different type of pothos. It's called a Shangri-La. And what it does is it has like very curled up leaves that kind of looks like spinach. Now, if you give it a lot of light, the leaves do open up and this one had a lot of light. Like this is such an interesting pothos and you don't see it around that often. It's a pretty uncommon uh, pothos variety. This is such a beautiful plant. So the this is another Warshawesii. It's just a more juvenile form of the plant and it's uh, Aurea Warshawesii. So it has these um, really, really lime green leaves. And you can see it's just a juvenile form, but even now it's starting to get some of the amazing shape to the leaves. And the more, uh, the bigger and bigger this plant grows, the more like, the leaves will turn into their you know adult form which will look exactly like the plant that i have under the soltech solution and grow lights in my uh, dining room how much did i pay for this one 45 45 dollars and i wouldn't have bought it if i didn't already know like how great the leaves look when they're in their adult form because i don't know a lot of people that have this plant and or anybody that has this plant really and i wouldn't have wanted to spend 45 dollars on it except i know the potential 
I know the potential this plant has and it's gonna be amazing. And it's already so beautiful and it's not even like fully, fully grown yet. I love talking about my plants. <laughs> um, so this beauty, let me bring it over here. This, so this is a philodendron called a Atapoenzi, Atapoenzi. Um, and I just, like love this leaf now this was a cutting and this was the original leaf and look how good it's still doing like you can see it's starting to um, fade out a little bit but it's absolutely beautiful and i'm equally obsessed with this pot i purchased this recently as like a little memento from um, a plant shopping trip that i did in copenhagen uh, in denmark and i saw this and it's done by a, a, an artist in berlin and it just kind of like sits like this kind of crooked plant has started to put out some new leaves finally which is really exciting so it's put out not just one but two new leaves and it looks like a little baby third is coming out there as well and then this beautiful one is my um silver glory so it's a lot like string of hearts except it's called silver glory and um it looks a lot like it as you can see except that it's a little bit different shape than string of hearts and they are like super, super silvery. The little, the little leaves are. And she is just like string of hearts in that like grows like crazy, loves bright light, enjoys a drink when she dries out and gets very tangled. <laughs> so she's got, um, she's pretty tangled up right now actually um, down here at the bottom. I was trying to untangle it but I wasn't having a very successful job of it. So I decided to just kind of leave it as is for now. This is a philodendron burl marks. I originally purchased it as a variegated philodendron burl marks, but it lost some of the variegation. Well, all of the variegation it reverted and I've trimmed it back. I've tried doing multiple things. I give it a lot of light from this window here. As you can see, the sun is blasting, but it just doesn't, um, put out variegation anymore, which is honestly totally fine because I love the just, standard green philodendron burl marks it's very easy it's a good grower um but i would say like it kind of sucks that it reverted because uh it was very expensive to get a variegated one of these this is a monstera deliciosa one that i purchased recently and it loves it down here it gets this like dappled morning light just absolutely beautiful this is a fiddle leaf fig I waited a long time to get a fiddle leaf fig because I wasn't sure uh, about care and I was worried I would kill it and all the leaves would drop off and they are expensive, but this one has been great. I mean, the leaf droppage has been minimal, um, mainly when I underwater, but with consistent watering when the soil is about halfway to fully dry and some good houseplant food. And this one does great. And this, she actually put out a ton of new leaves this year. So these are the plants in my bathroom. The sun finally came out, thank goodness. Um, and I would normally say don't put cacti and succulents in your bathroom because there's a lot of humidity. So you'd wanna put your plants that really love a lot of humidity in your bathroom, like your anthuriums and your philodendrons. And that's what I originally did, but they all got so brown and crispy that I switched it up a little bit. Um, and I think it just gets a ton of sun over here. I have the blinds kind of drawn, but if it's open, it just gets like sunlight blasting. So I've been trying this out and it seems to be going okay so far. But just so you know, I wouldn't always recommend doing this um, with your plants. And I don't know why it doesn't hold humidity so much in here as like other bathrooms. So I got this from a big box shop on clearance it was really inexpensive like five ten dollars and i believe it's a queen of the night uh cactus so it blooms these really gorgeous blooms at night and um it was looking really good and then it got like crisped up for some reason so now it's starting to like put out new growth again and it's doing better but it's such a cool type of cactus and I find that these actually do, like most cacti, they do enjoy a good drink when they're super dry, especially during the growing months. And I can't wait, hopefully one day she'll bloom for me. This is my one philodendron that I have in here. And the reason why I have it in here is that it had actually grown all the way up this wall, 
but it broke the other day. You can see where it broke right here, it's so sad, but it doesn't seem to mind it in here so much and it doesn't crisp up as much as the other plants did. I think it's called a tripartitum philodendron. Of course, for everything, I'll put the name in the video, but it's really great. Like, I don't know much about this plant. You know, I don't know, I don't hear it talked about that often, but it's really cool. It has these um, leaves that are three leaves and it's a fast grower. It's really easy to care for. I love this little shelf that is above my bathtub. I think I got it from Ross for like $19. It was a great deal. And the first plant here is a Peperomia Hope. And look how much she's grown. Like I love Peperomia Hopes. Like they have the cutest little succulenty leaves and they're just really easy, really cool. And then this pot I actually thrifted and I think it's from an artist. These are some cuttings that I've had forever of Brantianum and like they're full of roots, but just not doing great on the leaves there. I'm not sure what kind of cactus it is, but I got this from Ross and I love this little cactus, how it just is like doing its thing. It's grown quite a bit this year. Um, and I love that it looks like it's fuzzy. It's so cool. And then I have these two um, little body pots that I love that I got from a local plant shop. And this is a Dragon Jade Deschidia. I love this plant. They're kind of hard to find and when you do find them, they can be expensive, but, and they don't grow fast, but I just love them. I think they look so cool. I love the texture of them and the shape of the little leaves. Um, I love it. They enjoy a lot of light and a really well draining soil. This is a Ripsalis that was actually sent to me from one of the viewers in our community and one of our plant friends in the community. And I have always just kept it in this little cup in water and it's put out tons of roots cause it was a little cutting when it was sent to me. And I just think it looks so cool. Like she has all sorts of new growth that she's put out this year. So I love that plant. And then over here in this body pot is a really cool Hoya that I love. It's a Hoya enduensis. And it's these little petite ruffly leaves that just get me. Like, look how cute those are. And she's just putting out all sorts of little, um, little vines. And then maybe I'll use this as a trellis eventually. How much did I pay for this? I think I paid, yeah, I paid $24 for this one. And it's in like a little tiny pot, you can see here. But normally I stay away from really small plants when I first buy them because the root system's usually not established and it, it's harder to keep them alive. But I've had a lot of success with small Hoyas. So I didn't even hesitate when I saw this one. So this is an Epiphyllum hookeri orchid cactus and it was $15 from a big box shop. And I just have a little macrame hanger here that I ordered from Amazon. And I'll have links below to like everything that I talk about today that's available. I think I also got this macrame hanger from Amazon. I love this. This is a Cissus quadrang quadrangularis. It's actually related to like Cissus discolor and um, the grapevine. And this plant actually has a lot of medicinal properties, but I think it makes a great house plant. It's just so weird and unique, which I love house plants that are kind of funky. So you see how it has a little leaf here. Normally it has that at every one of these little, like where it joins up each part of the plant. And it looks so cool when it has all these cool little funky leaves all over it. But what happens is if it dries out, really at, for any period of time, all those little leaves shrivel up. I got this one from a big box shop and I love it. It's a gracilis lipstick plant. It has not bloomed for me yet, but I just love these really petite succulent like leaves. It's just, I just love it. I've become so into lipstick plants. I just wanna collect all of the different varieties because I love them and they're so easy and beautiful. And I just love how much this one is hanging down. It reminds me a lot of a Hoya. And then over here is another type of Ripsalis. I got it for $20 from the big box shop. And it reminds me so much of seaweed. I just think it is the coolest thing. I love it so much. How can you not love this Euphorbia? It's the coolest plant. I've never even heard of it before, but when I saw it at the shop, I had to get it. And I believe it was like $15, $20, but it's so cool. And I love how at the end of each 
um, like section of the plant, it has these cool little tufts. It reminds me of something from like Dr. Seuss, I don't know. And I love how it kind of like winds around and curls. It doesn't all just grow straight up. It's just wild and free, which I absolutely love. And I got this little basket thrifting. And then over here is a really beautiful aloe. And I love that if it's given enough light, it actually turns this like beautiful pink red color. I think I got this pot from Big Lots, but I love that it says plant lady on there. This one here is a spiral cactus and I love it. It just like spirals around. I'm obsessed. It put out this much new growth this year and it hadn't grown very much in the past because I hadn't been watering it enough. But now that I, I'm watering my cacti a lot more during the growing seasons. They're just starting to grow a lot more. And I love the pot that it's in. I've had this one since the beginning. This is like definitely in the early days of, um, of my plant collecting that I got this spiral cactus. And I got this pot from Walmart. I don't know if they still have them, but I just really love it. So this little cutie is a bear paw and they can come in like green or they come variegated like this. It's just so cool how the little succulenty leaves look like little paws and they're very, very fuzzy as well. Like look at all the little, like you can see the little um, like claws and then it has new little, little baby paws <laughs> coming out. I just love this plant. It was like $7. This is another one that I recently got. When I got the bear paws, I got this succulent as well. And when I saw it, I just fell in love. It's extremely velvety and just the like purple on the tips of the leaves in person, it's so beautiful. I just couldn't get enough of it. I paid like seven or eight dollars for it. Oh my God, look, there's a little ladybug on it. Go ladybug, go. Eat up all those. Eat up all the pests. This is called a mermaid tail succulent and it's amazing. It is the coolest succulent. So you can see here that it looks like a mermaid tail. A lot of times they're, um, they can be called like crested senecio. And I'd had my eye out for a mermaid tail succulent forever, but they're so hard to find and they're usually crazy expensive. But I randomly found this one at Big Bloomers in, uh, here in North Carolina and it was only $15. So since I got it, it has put out all of this growth. So it's a really good grower. It's thirsty though. So the second it dries out, like I give it a good drink and it likes a lot of light. And I just thought it was so cute in this little, um, this little pot that I got from a little plant shop. The last plant is a Peperomia incana. And I found this one at Big Bloomers as well, and it's really unique. It has extremely, extremely fuzzy leaves, which is kind of unique for Peperomia. I'd never seen Peperomia that had such like really fuzzy leaves. They're sort of round and heart-shaped, which I love. It has grown a lot since I got it, so it is a pretty quick grower, and it does not enjoy being dried out for any period of time, unlike other Peperomias that are pretty resilient to being dried out and prefer a drought. This one doesn't really like that. And I think I paid around like 15, $20 for it. So this is a little nook in our bonus room slash den. And I turned it into like a little reading nook slash plant area slash work station area. I do have quite a few plants in here and it gets really lovely afternoon light. So this area doesn't get a lot of light in the winter months. So I'll probably set this little grow light up again. It's um, a Bright Labs grow light and it's great because it's adjustable and I can turn on whichever light I want to or all three of them and it hooks on with that. Um, so up here in this really cute little heart pot, I have an Amedrium Silver and I found it recently and it wasn't, it wasn't super expensive. It was like 20 something dollars. Now the mature leaves look totally different than this and it is trying to grow. But as you can see, like it's put this out, which means it's not getting enough light. So I will pr either put this under a grow light or move it soon. And then this is my Moonlight Trubii skindapsis. And this is such a great plant. Like this was such a rare plant for a long time. So hard to find until Costa Farms released it in the big box shops. And you can see here where I have cut it and cut it and cut it because it grows like crazy. And what will happen is the leaves will start to curl when it gets thirsty. But I love the silver on the leaves. Like they're just, 
They're just so beautiful. And then over here I have a Peperomia string of turtles. And I'm shocked that I've been able to keep this plant alive. The key is not to overwater it. So it's best to really, really err on the side of caution. But isn't it so cute? Like I love how the little petite leaves look like little turtle shells. She's even blooming and like I said, she's not getting a ton of light over here and seems to do just fine with that. So she's really grown a lot. I'm, uh, I'm really glad that this one has managed to get comfy in this little spot and is pretty happy. This is a Hoya obovata and it looks like it does have some nice splash on there and I just think it's so cool that the leaves are so round and I really enjoy how it just has like the one strand and this year it put out a lot of growth and even put out a little second one down here and look how round and perfect the leaves are. I would love to get a variegated um, Hoya obovata. And then I got this little pot thrifting. So this is a cute little Hoya. I think it's a Lacanosa. And again, it's one of these plants that needs nothing. I had a lot of Hoya blooms this year. You can see like the old peduncles. And this was is a candle holder that, I use a lot of candle holders as cover pots. And I just think it's so pretty with the silver. Um, and I thrifted it. This one is a silver squill or a leopard lily. And it's a really cool plant. I think it was originally a variegated leopard lily, but it lost its variegation. It has like a little leopard design on the leaves and it's doing okay here, but it's kind of leggy and sparse as you can see. Um, so she would probably appreciate more light. So I, I'm thinking I will set up that grow light. And then I love this pot because it has the constellations on it. And my little crazy plant lady book I got on off of Amazon. I just think it's so cute. And it came with stickers and it's adorable. So this is a variegated African violet. Absolutely beautiful. I'm totally obsessed. And up here I have some strip grow lights. Yeah, she's in a self-watering pot from Repot Me. This is my mother uh, moonshine snake plant that I've taken propagations from and she put out a whole other plant um, this year. And she's super happy. I love a moonshine snake plant. It has a silver to the leaves, as you can see. Like, isn't that so stunning? And the more light you give it, the more silvery it becomes. I don't know what kind of little cacti this is, but it's grown a lot and it's I just appreciate how it's like just wild and free and doing its thing. Over here is a begonia I've had for a really long time. It's a Rex begonia. And this one's called Rex Jolly Silver. And I think this one might be a Harmony begonia because it does have silver um, tips to it, but I didn't get it from Cactus Club. So I don't know, I just think it's so beautiful. I love Rex begonias and I find they're really easy to take care of actually. But I really think the star of the show besides the begonia is this beautiful pot. And I found this one thrifting and it's by a famous um, artist. And I only got this one for a couple of dollars. It's signed on the back here, 1998 Tell M. Stein. So over here I have my lipstick plants with the exception of this, these last two on the right. This is a black pagoda lipstick plant. It has very, very unique leaves and it has very like purpley on the undersides of the leaves and it's beautiful. This one has bloomed a lot for me this year and the blooms on this one are interesting. They're very petite and at the base of the bloom, it has this like shocking bright yellow color and you can see it has quite a few blooms on there. So very interesting. This is a ponytail palm. And of course, being an island girl, I have to have a palm in my house and I just think it's so beautiful. I love ponytail palms. So this is a peanut cactus, this bright yellow cactus that's been grafted onto this other cactus here. And it's a good grower, it's grown a lot, but it does put off like little pups all the time, which are so cute. Like you can see one here on the, on the back, but it's definitely, interesting how it's decided to grow here. It is it's definitely somewhat phallic with the two balls on it, but uh, yeah, it's really funny. 
This is a domino cactus that I purchased from Pike's Nursery for around $19, I think. And it, it just looked like a regular domino cactus when I first got it. You know, it had like a little bit of variegation, but I don't know what happened over time. It just has started putting out huge, chunky, variegated leaves. Like, look how beautiful these variegated leaves are. Like, and it's not even supposed to be that variegated, but I do have it here where it gets a lot of sunlight. And so I do have to stay on top of watering and it does look like it has a little bit of sunburn to some of the leaves and the ends are a little bit crispy, but I'm not moving it because I love that it's pumping out these variegated leaves. And then it will also put out these like double leaves where two leaves come out at the same time. Like it does that quite a bit as well. Over here is another one of these long leaf serrated varieties similar to the Ring of Fire and the Ring of Fire Gold. This one's a jungle boogie and it's just solid green and it's so beautiful. And it puts out like blooms all the time and philodendron blooms are kind of like not really what you'd expect. They're just like, you see right there, there's a little bloom and over there's a little bloom. But it's great, it's absolutely massive. It loves this spot, it does deal with mealy bugs, but the systemic granules are keeping that under control for me. And I love it, it grows a lot and it requires next to nothing from me, but I just can't believe how huge it is. Like, here's my hand for comparison and it just has so many of those leaves. And I do fertilize my plants all the time. Now this plant is very sentimental for some reason. I've just had it so long and it's put up with so much. Look how pretty they are with that yellow variegation. Every leaf is unique and different. It puts out these like little straw looking or um, it almost looks like wheat flowers. And the leaves will curl up when it gets really thirsty. So I always know, like I just have to look at the plant to be like, oh, better get on it and water this one. I love these wicker baskets. They're so great. They're inexpensive compared to big ceramic pots. This is the like $15, $20 one from Ikea. I think I got these two from like Ross or Marshalls. And then this one over here is a basket, but I'm actually using it upside down as a plant stand and I thrifted that one. This is a string of pearls and it loves its little disco pot. It's doing great, and I water it pretty regularly. Um, I don't even wait for the pearls to get like really shriveled up because then I've waited too long and they start to drop off. And I've had string of pearls in the past and was really um, uh, reserved on how much I watered it, and now that I've been watering this one more, it's putting out so much growth. So, you know, it's one of the things I'm learning is like plants do appreciate good watering as long as the soil is well draining. And then this is a Mona Lisa lipstick plant. And I love the little heart shape leaves. Again, I'm obsessed with lipstick plants. They're so awesome. She hasn't bloomed or anything for me yet, but um, she has, is putting out new growth. And I'm hoping once she gets feeling comfy in her new spot, because I got her not long ago, that she'll start putting out some blooms. And then this one is a twister lipstick plant. And the leaves are so cool how they're like folded up in half. And I got this one from a big box shop, $20. I love all the lipstick plant varieties I find at uh, big box shops, like Lowe's and Home Depot. And this one has not bloomed either, but one day, I just love, love this one. And I have my eye out for another lipstick plant called Rasta and it's super, super twisty. I found this little whale at a thrift shop and I just think it looks so neat with a little plant in there. This is a pothos cutting that I took recently and it's doing fabulous cause pothos are the best. This is my Hoya Linearis. She is a beauty. One of my all time favorite Hoyas. I didn't think I was gonna love it as much as I do, but she's just a stunner, very easy. Again, this gets nice afternoon light, which she loves that. And I just give her a good drink when she's dry and these little interesting leaves, you know, retain the water. And she's so stunning. She blooms literally all the time for me too. These most gorgeous smelling blooms. Oh my gosh, look, you can even see some of the little petals from her previous blooms. This is probably my favorite astrophytum. I just think it's so unique. And I actually got this one in Atlanta. So this is an interesting piece of artwork that my mom got for me. I don't know. And 
Amen, but I, I love it. It's so funky. And then over here it says, listen to the language of nature, which of course I love that. Here's Alfredo is what I call him. And this is a paper spine cactus, which is one of my favorite little cacti because the spines are like paper, papery. And it's so neat. It's a type of tephro cactus. And then it also has, you also can get the tephro cactus without the spines. And that one's called a pine cone cactus. And I have one of those in my plant room that I'll show you guys. I don't know what was down here or something, but I love this pot. I got it from Amazon and I need to put another plant in there. I think there was a, some sort of ripple peperomia in there. So I got this one recently in Michigan actually, and it's labeled as a chocolate empress philodendron 27.99. This is one of those really long leaf serrated ones like the jungle boogie, like the um, ring of fire, but the leaves are a little bit thicker and I love the really dark color. And I'm curious what it's going to look like when it gets bigger, but I think these two look a lot, look similar to me. And I love this pot it's in <laughs> that says stay weird. I'm all about it. This is an Anthurium fingers and it had completely died. And I would say if you have an Anthurium that doesn't have any leaves on it, don't give up on it. Just give it some light and give it minimal water and you'll be surprised that the, the leaves come back. It's still looking a little rough, but at least it is putting out new growth. And I thrifted this little basket. This is a variegated lipstick plant. It is, I think my first lipstick plant that I ever got. And I love her so much. You can see the old leaves have a lot of variegation. The new leaves, however, don't really have much variegation, but they have this gorgeous purple on the backs of the leaves and she blooms for me all the time. And she doesn't have any blooms on her right now, surprisingly actually, cause she blooms so much, but you can see the old flowers and they're just this super vibrant red color, like a lipstick. I have a few plants on this little desk. And this one here is a Brantianum that I found at a big box shop and it was $13 and it came with this nice little terracotta pot. The thing with the Brantianum is they are really tricky to get those nice big leaves like I see here originally and it needs a lot of light and it needs a lot of humidity. And so don't feel bad if no matter what you do, the leaves just kind of look small and like this. I think every uh, most people are having the same experience with it unless it has absolutely pristine conditions. Oh, and let me just, I got this um, from Amazon and I love it so much. It's a little moon lamp. It puts out nice peaceful light and it just, it's not even connected. It's through a magnet that it just kind of stays hovering there like the moon and it can even spin. A gentle look. It actually like spins and stuff. It's such a cool lamp. I think this is called like a worry Buddha and like you rub his back and it takes your worries away. You can see um, he's had a lot of back rubs. This is another Anthurium fingers. Absolutely beautiful, wasn't expensive. I got her at a big box shop and I love how the more adult these leaves become, the more little lobes it gets. Beautiful. And then I just put this little guy in here, the little hedgehog with the mushroom. Oh gosh. I just think that's so cute. And then this is a little um, cylindrica snake plant. So cute. And then I found this little cat candle holder and she's just curled up asleep and I put a little cactus in there. And this is a Hoya Australis Lisa. And I just love the variegated leaves. And it's, I like how it's just like the one strand. And then I found this little um, fish pot thrifting as well. So this was really my main project this year, setting up my plant room. Um, I redid a lot of things. I painted the walls, I set up my Soltech Solution grow lights, and it's been really, really great. I much prefer it. Um, I had set up this side when I first moved into this house, but the other side, um, I hadn't done anything with it. Again, I'll be showing all the different grow lights that I use because I have quite a few in this room, but these are the Soltech Solution Aspect grow lights and they're amazing. Like I cannot express the amount, like I'll show you all the new growth and it's only been 
a short amount of time and they're making a huge difference because this wall got like no light. I had big planks set up against this wall and I just wasn't having any success. First up is this philodendron pedatum and it is such a great plant. I love it so much. And what's interesting about this one is it does have like each leaf has like a little like white spots on it. So it has very, very mild sport variegation, but it's a great grower and it grew all the way up to the top. And then what I did was I pruned the top and then it'll put off a new shoot and then I'll just direct the new shoot to go like this way underneath the grow lights. You can also see kind of interwoven in here is a philodendron varicosum and I just am in awe. I can't believe my philodendron varicosum looks like this, but the interesting thing is that the pot is actually over here with this moss pole. So it just, I've let my plant room just kind of be wild and free. Um, everything just does whatever it wants and it has been putting out new leaves. And what I actually did was put a little command hook here to try to help direct it back to the light. So this is the newest leaf. Look how velvety and I love the lime green um, veining. And then it has the super, super fuzzy stems and the beautiful purple on the backs of the leaves. like. I just cannot get enough of that plant. These are all cuttings I did of a of a, um, a Raphidophora decursiva, which is also known as the dragon tail, a dragon tail decursiva. And it was a really good grower, fabulous plant, wasn't getting enough light and it had become really leggy. So I just chopped and propped. Now it's just rooting in this little vase and I love it. This is a beautiful begonia that I recently got from Cactus Club. It's one of those Harmony begonias because you can see it has the silver on the bottom of the leaves. These are the older leaves that have crisped up. This is the newer leaf that has adapted to the environment. If you bring a plant home and it starts to crisp up, don't stress, it's just adapting. The newer leaf should, you know, come out looking okay. Um, but this one is called Supernatural. I believe. Harmony Supernatural. Yes, it was $16. I got it from Cactus Club. And I just love how dark the leaves are. It's purple on the back. And for me, it's like all the little spots on the outside of the leaves in addition to the like the little silver tip. This is my mother plant of my variegated whale fin. And it was originally just this guy here and then I propagated it to the little whale fin, variegated whale fin you saw downstairs in my kitchen and then it just put out this new uh, baby leaf which I can propagate so I'm surprised. I did not think a variegated whale fin would grow as much as it does and put out so many babies but I just water it when it's dry and it's been putting out tons of growth. So this is my uh, jet diamond Peace Lily. This was one of the Costa Farms ones at the big box shops. It had a bloom, which I chopped off because um, the bloom looked really wonky and it was just like taking energy from the plant. But this is a, uh, I believe it's a type of, it's similar to a domino Peace Lily, but it does have nicer variegation. And I'm all about a variegated Peace Lily. And it does have new little, little leaves that it's been putting out here. This is a Florida ghost philodendron. And I can't say that it's really done anything. I've had it for a really, really long time and it just puts out little baby leaves and I recently moved it here. So I'm hoping it will do more, but the Florida ghost philodendron, the new leaves come out very, very um, like minty green color. And then over time they turn like a dark green color. This is one of my most recent philodendrons that I got. It's a Pariso Verde and I got it for a great deal. I think it was $20 and the leaves are so big and look at this one. Now I know the Pariso Verde, um, the variegation, it depends on temperature and lighting and all of that and it will kind of like the new leaves that come out in the winter time look like a dark green and then in the summertime will be variegated. So I'm very curious to see what this new leaf does. I have just been started using these and you know, it's working pretty well for me right now. So these are lithops, also known as living stones. And I found this one in New York City recently and I, I bought it as a birthday plant. Um, I like to go plant shopping on my birthday and get like a gratitude plant for being a year older. And this was one of the ones that I got. And I love that all the lithops are different colors. And it was $15.
And I think the paw is cute too. So this one down here was an import as a variegated peace lily. And I have no idea what it's doing. Um, all the big leaves died off. The leaves are very thin, which is so weird for a peace lily. It only has like the tiniest bit of variegation on the newer leaves. I thought this plant was, wasn't going to make it because it only had like a couple leaves left because they all died off. But since putting it under this grow light and, you know, keeping an eye on it, it's been putting out all of this little bushy growth. So, you know, fingers crossed. I'm just very curious to see, to see what happens with it. So this one here is a philodendron glorious and it's so beautiful, but the leaves are so velvety and it just put out this beautiful leaf. I don't want to touch it or mess with it too much, but I love it. And I just have this little plant Velcro that I use all the time. Uh, this is great. You can get it from Amazon, also from like a um, Lowe's or Home Depot. And it's so gentle on the plant. And I like that I can reuse it as much as I want to, but it's doing great here. Like it loves it, it put out its new leaf. It has like um, all sorts of little baby leaves happening here. So I'm very excited about my philodendron glorious because I wanted one forever, but they were so expensive until recently when plant prices finally started coming down. Then this one here is my squamiferum and I love squamiferum. Like look at those leaves, they're so cool. And I love the fuzzy, um, the fuzzy red stems and it's really happy. So you can see since I put it on this little stake and putting it under the grow light, this plant was struggling a lot, but once I redid the whole thing, it started putting out new leaves. So I'm excited. And like you can see the old leaf was really small and now they're starting to get bigger. Hopefully this one will be even bigger. Yeah, so this is a philodendron splendid and she is absolutely splendid. That's her newest leaf that's coming out. I'm so excited about all this new growth because look at what she was doing before. And I was like, oh no. And then it was just looking so rough. You can see some spider mite damage that she had. So it's been a struggle, but she's all set up now. She has her stake, she's under the grow light and lo and behold, she's putting out some new leaves. Very exciting. And then down here is a cool one. This is a golden violin phil philodendron. So the more light this plant gets, the um, lighter green and gold color like that the leaves become, you can see here. I actually found this one at the Raleigh State Farmer's Market and it wasn't ridiculously expensive. I'm seeing them around more and more, I think maybe $20 or so. So this is a Monster Albo cutting that it looked like it was doing well and then the new leaf died and this is all that's left. So I'm like, just fingers crossed, the most crossed they can be that this one, I just put it here and in the hopes that it would recover like my other plants are recovering. So we'll see how it does. So this is actually a type of pothos. This is an epipremnum amplissimum variegated. I found this one at Big Bloomers and just like flipped out. Oh. 79 you know that's not that bad actually 80 dollars for this plant um and i've never seen it before or since so actually 80 dollars was a great deal on this one and it has grown so much since i got it this is another one of the harmony begonias and um i wanted to get a big one of these but it was too expensive it was like a hundred dollars this is called a quasimodo and um the owner of Cactus Club gave me this cutting and I'm so excited to see what she does. <gasps> it's going to look so cool. Like when these leaves get big, they just have the most interesting shape to them. She has prime real estate spot, like right under the grow light in the middle of the plant room. So she can just ha shine in her full glory one day. This is a um, lemon meringue pothos that I got from Costa Farms and it has grown like a weed, just grown, grown, grown. Then this one is a beautiful philodendron bietier. And look how gorgeous those leaves are. But I think she likes the spot. She's starting to lean a little bit. So I might give her a little steak. Yeah, she needs a little steak, but you know, she's enjoying it under the grow light. She has good aerial roots 
and um, I'll give her a repotting maybe when it comes into the summer months if she needs it. So this is the non-variegated amplesimum. It's so beautiful. Look at these silvery, silvery leaves and it's grown so much. It was really compact just in the pot and since I got it, it's put out like all of this new growth. You know, I did have another amplesimum that didn't do that well, but the Costa Farms one I've had success with. And then over here, I have a philodendron mayo eye and I'm at, they were really um, expensive. Like when I got mine, it was very expensive, over a hundred and something dollars. Uh, probably 150 around. But since then, I, I've seen them, huge plants, way bigger than this, at big box shops for $29. And it comes with a cool pot. My Chia Pence Syngonium that I love. I mean, the leaves get so huge. Love my Chia Pence. And it was starting to put out little baby leaves, not doing much. But now with in this new, um, with this new lights and stuff, it's doing really well. It has a new leaf coming out. I love the Chia Pence. And um, a friend of mine, I saw a variegated Chia Pence, but I was told it's like a very slow grower, the variegated one, where this one is a pretty, pretty quick grower. And I have it on a plank. And I actually think she might be somewhat attaching. I'm, I haven't had much success with like my plants attaching to the plank, but uh, I believe that's humidity related. So this is my philodendron white knight that I got from a big box shop and I can't believe how much it's grown. Like, isn't it amazing? Please ignore, like, you know, don't pay attention to this. The plant is still really healthy. It just had s some trouble, like when it was unfurling, you know, I think it had a little bit of pests that I fixed. Um, probably got it from being around my other plants that had pests, but it is really beautiful. It has this fully white leaf that it's put out and I just expect these white leaves to just crisp up and die, but it has not. Um, and it has a new leaf coming out and I'm excited to see it's not fully white. Actually, it has some of the other color, but this white knight is beautiful and I'm just so impressed with how much growth it's put out. It's still in its original pot that I got it in and I just put this little stake here for some um, stability and then you can see I use the little velcro tape on the plants which does really well and it is I mean the leaves are getting huge over here this is a variegated epipremnum pinnatum albo and it's doing really well they're coming way down in price which is great to see and I just put it on this little moss pole with some of this little plant velcro and it loves it and when it got to the end I just like moved it back down and now it's going to start like climbing up again. It has some really nice variegation and it's starting to actually get some little fenestrations on the leaves as well, some little holes. This is the begonia that I had a cutting of downstairs and believe it or not, this will come back. So don't be afraid if your begonias get really leggy to just chop it back and then um, it'll put off some new offshoots. This is an Anthurium magnificum that I thought had completely died, but I've learned with Anthurium, even if there's no leaves, give it another chance. So I just waited patiently and look, it's put out a new leaf and uh, it's brand new. So it should continue to grow and hopefully get really, really big. And it looks like this is a bloom. I don't know why she wants to put out a bloom and a leaf at the same time, but you know, whatever she wants to do is fine by me. This is a gorgeous Aglionema. I absolutely love it. It just, I like that it has really, really bright pink leaves with only a little bit of green on the outside. And this one has more green coming in, which looks beautiful as well. But this is the most recent new leaf and it seems like it's fully pink. So I think with these type of Aglionema, the more light you give it, the more, um, the more pink you get on the leaf. This is a philodendron Calkins gold that I found at a Home Depot. It's similar to a painted lady looking, but it has a little bit different long leaves. It doesn't have pink on it. And it's a fabulous plant, like very fast growing. Um, and it gets big, it gets big fast. This is the newest leaf. And I just love how golden it looks and it has some cool variegation on there. I think it was $19 from Home Depot. This is one of those uh, lemon lime philodendrons and it hadn't been getting a lot of light so it had lost the, the really neon color 
but now that it's getting more light, I do see that the leaves are getting kind of neon and hopefully they'll get, um, they'll get bigger. I may turn this one into a hanging plant because it looks like it wants to hang down. This is another one that I repotted up two different pothos together, a neon pothos, and then I think this one is a pearls and jade. Begonia maculata wadii from Costa Farms that I got for $20 and it had become really leggy and I completely chopped it down like I did with this one. And now it's completely regrown back. It has all sorts of new exciting growth and I've put some little stakes so that it will get nice and tall and hopefully get humongous beautiful leaves. Begonia maculata is really so stunning like the little poke. This was the first one that originally got me into some of these angel wing begonias. It has red on the backs of the leaves, just stunning. This is a philodendron dark lord and you can see it wasn't doing anything. Now look at her go. So um, philodendron dark lords are gr really beautiful and the leaves are so dark and the stem is this beautiful dark burgundy color and the leaves can become really really huge given the right conditions. Oh and I also got these plant stands from Amazon that was new a new addition as well like it's three plant stands total and the grow lights and I painted the wall white and then I just put some pots down on the floor like in between the plant stands and I couldn't be happier. They were super, super easy to put together. And this is um, another one of my mom's pieces of art. She's so talented. This one's called Caribbean Corner. It's a limited edition print. I love it so much. So this was another addition to the plant room this year. Uh, this beautiful plant stand that I also got from Amazon. This one is a variegated apiscia, which is, apiscias are related to African violets, so you can see some of the old blooms on there. But this is a variegated one, and I found this at a Big Bloomers. I think it was around $10, $15. I'd never seen a variegated apiscia before, and I just love how pink those little leaves are. And then this one I got, I thrifted this pot. I like all these, a lot of these pots I thrifted. This is a cute little butterfly that when the sun hits it, it flutters. My mom got that for me, so sweet. This is a Shiveriana that I recently got and I think I found it for $7 from a Meyer grocery store. It's a type of ficus that um, was newer to the market this year. Down here I have a little domino cactus and a little cupcake planter that I thrifted. This is a philodendron painted lady. And I love how she's just wild and free hanging down here in this little pot that I got from Amazon. And then this one is a Choco Red Philodendron. This one struggled um, with all the pests outbreak that I've been dealing with, but it's making a comeback. It's been putting out some new leaves and it has a new leaf coming out here. And I just love the Choco Red. Like you can see the leaves are kind of funky and um, a lot of that's from the pests, but they're doing better now. This is a Pastazanum, just hanging out here in this little uh, moss, in some little moss on this macrame. Now this is a Syngonium Winelandii. This has really, really dark velvety leaves that I'm obsessed with. I found this one for $70, but you can get them for a lot cheaper now. This is a Philodendron Jose Bono. I recently got this one for around $40 and I opted for one that didn't have a lot of variegation. It's still extremely variegated as you can see, but it still has green on the leaves so that it doesn't get the, you know, white chunky bits that kind of get crispy. Anyways, this Jose Bono is beautiful. I have a feeling it's going to quickly become one of my favorites. This is the newest leaf that's come out. I love the variegation. It's so marbly and beautiful. I always would get this one confused with the Pariso Verde and they're very different actually. And I would say out of the two of those, this would definitely be my choice. Look at this cool little half moon down here. And I found this little pot thrifting. This is another one that I'm rapidly seeing become popular all of a sudden on the market. And it's a Philodendron Gigantium Blizzard. Now these leaves can get absolutely massive. That's why it's called a Gigantium because the leaves get so big. And I, don't know why mine hasn't been actually getting huge leaves. It keeps trying and then it kind of goes to smaller leaves. I think I need to maybe repot it, but it's absolutely beautiful. I mean, look at those variegated leaves. And I also really like how the variegation is extremely stable. So you don't have to worry about it reverting. And this is a little thrifted gold pot that I found. Now I will say these are pretty expensive still, a hundred dollars, give or take, but they'll be coming down in price. I imagine with the growing popularity of them. This is another variegated African violet. 
it's so beautiful and I love that the variegation actually matches the flowers and it's all purple. The stems are purple, the variegations, like a lavender purple, the backs of the leaves are purple, the blooms are this gorgeous lavender purple color. So um, let me see, oh, it does have it, Buckeye Country Gal. I think these might be from Harmony Begonias actually. Like in addition to begonia, she does um, violets as well. So yeah, it's so beautiful and I, it won't show up on camera, but the variegation actually has a lot of like sparkles in it. So beautiful. And I mean, it's just loving this little pink pot that it's in. It's one of the self-watering pots from Repot Me. It's having just a time over here. So I'm not gonna move it or anything. It's just really, really loving it. This is an Anthurium vicii. I got it when it was extremely tiny. Since then it's put out a couple leaves and it has a new leaf coming out here. Look how like pretty it is and like peachy orange color. Just absolutely lovely. I love vicii, especially when they get big and they get um, abs, <laughs> for lack of a better word, where they get like, you know, where the leaves look kind of abish. Um, this one has a little bit of them. Um, you see like that texture there? This is an Anthurium clarinervium. For some reason, it only wants to have one leaf or two leaves at a time. So it just dropped one and it is putting out another one. Coming into winter time, I have been seeing a lot of, um, of the old leaves dying off, which is totally normal. Isn't she beautiful? I'd say Anthurium clarinerviums are definitely, like, if not my favorite, then the top favorite of Anthuriums for me. So this is the type of Scandaptus pictus and it's a jade one. So it's solid green and it's actually one of the harder ones to find these days, just a solid green jade scandapsis. And it's a really good grower. I've uh, trimmed it off a few times and pruned it, but the leaves are stunning. It's just such a happy, beautiful plant. I definitely recommend any kind of scandapsis and um, this one definitely is no exception to that. This is a white stripe philodendron. So it looks like a Brazil and it's somewhat similar, but the variegation is different and the shape of the leaves are different. The color of the variegation is different than a Brazil. So yeah, this white stripe is gorgeous, but it's nice to have like a huge basket full of it. And uh, it's very easy to propagate. It's a great grower. And yeah, I'd say this is definitely a wonderful plant. This is a Peperomia scandens variegata. And what sold me were the beautiful heart-shaped leaves. I can't get over how gorgeous these leaves are and how they're just shaped like hearts. And then I just thought it was so cute when I saw it um, for $20 at a big box shop with the variegation. I had to add it to my collection and it's been great. Um, this one definitely appreciates a good drink and some sunlight. So this is a string of hooks. As you can see, the leaves are curved like a hook. Now you have string of bananas, string of dolphins, string of pearls, and this one is the string of hooks variety. It's a great plant. I think I paid about $20 for it and I just love how it just trails down like that. This big one here is a Hoya Australis and it is probably my fastest growing Hoya. You can see she's putting out a vine there and I was kind of just wanting to keep her somewhat small so I trimmed back a lot of her vines that she had put out and um, she just keeps coming back with a force, like with a vengeance. So um, if you're looking for a fast growing Hoya, an Australis is a great one to get. And it's just beautiful with those big leaves. Um, fabulous, fabulous Hoya. Here next to her is another Hoya. I got this one from a big box shop, like Lowe's or Home Depot. And I think this one is a Lacanosa. Has like the little petite leaves. And look at all this new growth. Just beautiful. This over here is a golden potho. She's thirsty. So this is a good example of a thirsty plant where the leaves start to kind of droop and curl in a little bit. Um, but it's just grown so much. And I think it's a Hawaiian gold. It might not just be like a golden pothos, but a Hawaiian gold, which those seem to have really big leaves and very golden variegation. And she's really happy here. Like she's put out all this new growth. So I just need to give her a drink and she'll be, um, like, right back to normal. So here in this windowsill, I have some cacti and there's some really fun varieties. This first one over here in the corner is a Euphorbia obesa, also known as the softball Euphorbia, because typically they're really round and fat. I don't know why mine's so tall. I think it's just grown a lot and it probably needs a, some more soil. But yeah, this is um, a somewhat uncommon type of Euphorbia. 
This beautiful one is also a euphorbia and it's euphorbia trigona variegated. I love the leaves on it and the variegation. This is a cute little whale, whale pot that I happen to have. I used to have a violet in it and I just thought it looked cool with like the water kind of coming out the blowhole. It's grown so much, like all my cacti grew so much this year. This is one of my slower growing cacti and she doesn't do much, she just hangs out here. But I love it because it's completely spineless. There's not a single spine on this one. They're pretty uncommon, hard to find. This is a plumosa cactus and I love it. It looks like it's covered in feathers. You see how there's like, almost like little feathery flowers and it's pretty soft to the touch. I mean, there are sharp spines down in there or spikes down in there, but for the most part it's plumosa because it looks like it has little, you know, feathery flowers all over it. And this is one of my faves. So cool. This is an old man cactus. He's looking really dirty, like he needs a bath. But the old man cactus are, uh, they're the really hairy ones that you see. There's like old man and old woman cacti, and I don't know the difference between the two. But this guy's grown a lot, but instead of growing tall, he just grew really fat. So, and I love the top, how his hair is just like sticking out like crazy. <laughs> Look, there's some sharp like spikes in there too that you wouldn't want to mess with. Now this one was so short and skinny and you, all the new blue color is the new growth this year. So it's been really happy. Um, I think this one's called like a candle, blue candle cactus, but I'm excited to see how much he grows. I All I changed this year was watering. I upped my watering and I also started fertilizing a bit more with my cacti and they all just responded. Like give it some good well-draining soil and they'll have like a lot of new growth. This is a Euphorbia snowflake. It used to be just that one in the middle and look at all of her babies. And Euphorbia snowflake is called that because of the like white snowflake look on it. Um, this one's very green, but a lot of them get really white. So maybe it needs more sun, I'm not sure. This room doesn't get a ton of light. It does get some afternoon light but that's why I have so many grow lights in here. And then this is a white ghost cactus. Um, it's another type of euphorbia and it's also had a lot of growth. And on the top there, it looks like it's having a lot of new little growth points. It's so beautiful and it's so interesting because it doesn't have a lot of green on it to produce chlorophyll, but they're really, um, really popular. So, and I am seeing them not as expensive as they used to be. This is a Hoya carii, a variegated Hoya carii. And she is beautiful. Hoya carii have heart-shaped leaves. As you can see, that's like what they're so well known for. And there's all different varieties of Hoya carii. You can get solid green, variegated on the outside, variegated on the inside. And this one's variegated on the, in on the outside. And um, when the leaves first come out, the variegation is like this green color. So this is all new growth. And then it eventually turns to white over time. So it's just beautiful. This one I need to like give it some more assistance and help it stick to the plank a little bit better because it has a lot of growth. But um, I think, I'm not sure how much I paid for this one, but I've seen ones now for where you can get a decent one for around $60. Again, it depends where you live. And look at this mess that my Hoya just, <laughs> I just vacuumed here the other day. And clearly there's been some blooming happening from this Hoya up here. And that's the thing with Hoyas, they make such a mess and they can stain as well. So um, just noted. This is an iron cross begonia and I originally found it for around $8, which is hard to believe. And they're so cool. I mean, look at these leaves and I don't know if the camera will do it justice, but they are spiky and they're not hard to the touch or anything, but they just have this spike like appearance. And I also love the dark brown on the, in the middle of the leaves and then the um, lime green. And then the stems are kind of this reddish brown color and they're very fuzzy. It's just such a cool begonia. It's definitely one of my favorites. This is another Rex begonia and I think it's a red kiss or something like that. And then this pot is like <laughs> struggle of my life with plants. But yeah, I love this begonia and it has so many beautiful colors in the leaves and it really varies like depending on the temperature and the lighting conditions and watering and all that as to like what color the leaves are. Um, and I just think that's so, so cool. So these plant shelves are all from Ikea as is this little greenhouse down here. And it's the Vichjo 
ones a lot of people ask me about these shelves. These grow lights are Barina grow lights and I got them from Amazon. Again, I'll link everything that I talk about in this video in my description, but they're great and they, I had trouble sticking them. So a lot of times I use like fishing line to get them to stay, but um, they've worked really great and I have them set up every other shelf gets a grow light because they're glass, these shelves are, and the light travels through really well. This is a Monstera Stilta Pecana. Paid $50 for it. And do you know I saw it the other day at a big box shop and it was $20 for like the biggest, fullest basket of them. So just keep an eye out at your big box shop for this Monstera. And I can't say I've had the most, a lot of success with this plant, but it's doing okay. I've had to trim it back a few times because it's put out some of these really kind of leggy vines. Um, but it's really beautiful. Like the leaves are stunning. So hopefully it, it will, um, continue to do well for me because we're on a good streak right now. Like I think these are all new leaves that have grown, which is awesome. This is a Cebu blue pothos. You can also find these at big box shops and it's just chilling. The Cebu blue has these really blue, gorgeous leaves. So back there, that's a Raven's Easy. I also like to collect as many ZZs as I can, like Pothos and Epipremnums, they're amazing. So that's a Raven's Easy. It has really dark leaves. And then this one over here is just a, a regular green ZZ. The String of Hearts grows very, very quickly and it touches the ground a lot. So I just trim it and propagate it. It's been making these because it wants to root in something. And look, it's even putting out a little leaf out of it. Isn't that cool? This is a Hoya shepherdii, also known as the string bean Hoya because of the long leaves. Now you can see all of the old peduncles on this plant. It's always been a great bloomer for me. I've been having a lot of success with Hoya blooms the past couple of years. Fertilizing plays a big part in that. Pretty much all of these pots I thrifted. Now this is a Philodendron Camposport Tienum. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce that. I did a bunch of little propagations in, in the top to kind of make it bushier um, in sphagnum moss. So we'll see how that does. And this is a really fast growing philodendron. The juvenile leaves look completely different than the adult form leaves, but I just think the juvenile leaves are so beautiful. They look like, like a little sunset. Um, so I'm a big fan. This one is a Peperomia pink marble. And I just love any kind of pink variegated peperomia. Now, sometimes it does a lot more pink than others. You can see on some of these new leaves, it's very, very pink and full. I found this one, it was around $11. This is a Hoya Chelsea and I love the Chelsea leaves because they have little divots in them and they're, the leaves are heart-shaped, just beautiful. And then this one kind of behind my string of hearts here is my um, Anthurium Waro Raquinum, and I've had it for a long time and it's never done anything. And then just in the last few months, it put out this beautiful leaf that's still growing. It put out this beautiful leaf and it's doing a third leaf. So I don't wanna mess with it because it's so beautiful and the leaves can get so massive and it's really happy right now. I'm not sure what type of Hoya this is. I think it's a Gracilis. It's grown a lot. Um, I would say though, this is the one that the blooms really stain. So just notice, just be aware of that. This one back here with the beautiful purple on the outside of the leaves is a Hoya Kentiana and it gets that beautiful purple color because of the sun. So it's called sun stressing and it's really lovely when that happens on Hoyas. This is a little African violet. It's not variegated or anything. Um, I just found it on sale at a big box shop for like $2. And the older leaves got really sun stressed, um, but the newer leaves are doing great. And it had a, the cutest little purple bloom that just died. And then this is um, a little pot that I thrifted. You can find really good African violet deals at the big box shops. This is one of my newer plants that I've purchased and it's a Scandapsis S-O-O-O Silver. And I think I paid like 40 something dollars for it, but it's a Scandapsis pictus, but it's just purely silver. And I have never seen that before. So it's silver on the front, it's silver on the back of the leaves. I mean, it is beautiful. Um, and then I, I don't know, I found this little like the van pot thrifting um, and I thought it was really cute. I got this at a big box shop. It was on clearance for like a dollar. And I just thought the little guy was so cute with the little succulent coming out of his head. And then this is a, another confetti syngonium. Of course, I just love the pink of the leaves. It's a great grower. And um, I found this 
thrifting, this little guy. So you'll notice some like kooky kind of funky pots and I just appreciate a little bit of whimsy sometimes. And uh, so I try to keep the these more unusual pots to like this room and my little reading plant nook in our bonus room. This guy here is a Peperomia beetle and it's grown faster than any other Peperomia I've ever had. And I just love the leaves. It's so cool. How much did I pay for this? Let's see. Um, $14. This is a Syngonium Frosted Heart. And it's called Frosted Heart because it has like white on the leaves. And it was really struggling. So I just repotted it. There was something going on with the roots and the soil. So I repotted it and it's already seems to be bouncing back and it's put out a new leaf that looks really good. So um, hopefully it'll be all right. Back here is just a cute little watermelon peperomia. I, I don't know why, but I really struggle with watermelon peperomias. I've had a few of them and none of them have really made it, but this one's just kind of hanging in there. And I just think it's so cute. I love watermelon peperomias, but for some reason I just struggle with them. This is a Raphidophora tetrasperma. It's incredibly fast growing. I've also heard it called a Monstera mini or a Monstera Ginny. It's not a Monstera, it's a Raphidophora. And this one had like a little variegated, like a little spot on it. So I thought it might be variegated, but it's not. And that's totally fine because it's put out like so much new growth since I got it. So if you're looking for a fast growing plant, this is a good one. Um, and it loves to climb. It's more of a climber than like a hanging plant, but it's beautiful. This is a Hoya polyneura or a fishtail Hoya. And it's fairly obvious why it's called a fishtail because of the shape of the leaves. It just looks like a fishtail. This plant here is an Alocasia ninja and it's a fabulous Alocasia. It's doing well, knock on wood, none of the regular pest issues that I get with Alocasia. It's one of the jewel Alocasias, so like black velvet, ninja, um, there's a bunch of different jewel Alocasias and they stay somewhat small. So this ninja is beautiful. And then this is a Hoya Sunrise and this is one of my favorite Hoyas. Like um, the leaves are actually green color, but if you give it light, it gets this little, come on, string of hearts. Let me just wrap you around here or something. Um, it, so when you give it enough sunlight, it gets like the beautiful sunrise color, like what it's named for. And it's stunning. It's also a great uh, Hoya to propagate. It's very fast growing. So I 10 out of 10 recommend this plant. Then this hoy is called a crinkleate because it has eight little crinkles in it. And it's really fuzzy on the backs of the leaves, which I think is unexpected. I don't ever he hear anyone talk about how like fuzzy they are on the backs of the leaves. But um, just the shape of these leaves is what's so, so cool. It's a slower growing hoya in my experience. This is a Syngonium batik. Fabulous, fabulous Syngonium. They're, um, they were really uncommon for a long time and now I'm seeing them on the market. And then this one back here is a Syngonium Pink Splash maybe? Pink Splash, it says $90 on there. So these little glass bowls are perfect for propagations and that's how I have them set up. And I set them up recently, not too long ago. And it's so great, like I can just take a cutting and throw them in here and like they're all rooting. Like look at all these roots. So if I have a plant that's really leggy or whatever, I just throw them in here. Like this Syngonium Albo was struggling, chopped it. This is a Philodendron uh, Gigas. It was struggling. Um, it's already putting out roots. That's so exciting. This is a little skate. Um, this is a little Jade Scandapsis, Hoya Linearis. I have a Polyneura up there. This is a cool Aglionema. This is my um, Pedatum that has like a little variegation on it. And then there's a white stripe philodendron. And what I have are these little grow lights that I found on Amazon. And one is pointed to these plants and then the other one's pointed to the little propagation stations. So they've worked out great. I'll have everything linked below. This is a beautiful pterodactyl anthurium. It's a hybrid of anthurium clarinervium, which is that anthurium right over there, and anthurium fingers, which is in my bonus room. And this is what it looks like. And because it's a hybrid, it can look a lot like one plant or the other, so they can vary. Um, but I like this one because it looks a lot like the Clarinervium, which is the one I prefer. And look, 
it, I, I didn't realize this at the plant shop, but since I've had it for a while, I noticed it has berries, which is seeds. So I'm really excited. And I don't know what it pollinated with. So it could have pollinated with the same type of anthurium, a different one. So I'm waiting until the seeds are ready and then I'm going to plant the seeds and see what happens. So I'll keep you all updated. That's really exciting. So this is my one orchid. I believe it's called a, a dancing orchid and it's never bloomed for me until I was getting ready to film this houseplant tour and I saw it had bloomed and I just, I felt like it was a sign. Like, okay, perfect, bloom just in time for houseplant tour. And what I do is I bottom water this orchid and, and give it a good drink. Um, and it's just grown like crazy. Like, look at all these roots. It's just like, it's, I can't express, it's grown like five times the size as it had been. So, um, and it's not received a lot of light either. And it's, so happy so it makes me want to get orchids but i like can't have another obsession i have enough plants you know gotta like put put the brakes somewhere so this is um an anthurium uh crystallinum and crystallinum are absolutely beautiful it just dropped a leaf so i'm hoping that a new one will come up soon this is a little thrifted pot all right let's take a look in my ikea greenhouse cabinet so taking a quick peek in my Ikea greenhouse cabinet, I haven't weatherproofed this one, um, which it, it really needs that to keep the humidity in, but it still it does a good job. Well, some of my plants actually have not been doing well in here. So I recently switched out the grow light to a new Soltec Solutions grow light that they have. It's called The Grove. So when I heard they had one I could put in my greenhouse cabinet, I decided to go for it and it's dimmable as well, which is really nice. So my plants seem to be responding well. So it's a little bit of a cluster in here, but that's all right. Um, this is a another Hoya polyneura, but it's brogé, which means it has silver on the leaves. You can really see the silver on that leaf. This is a propagation I did of a Hoya sunrise, and it's absolutely beautiful. It's starting to get the pink, which is awesome. So this is a Hoya croniana splash, and I found this little cat pot, which I just think is so cute. This is another really cool Hoya that has petite leaves and really fuzzy leaves as well beautiful and then the last one in here i'm really obsessed with but it's fussy and it's this little guy i think this one's called a rotunda flora i'm not sure but i mean look at those freaking rectangle leaves i had to add this one to my collection and it's recently started growing like it stayed small for a really long time and now it's finally growing a little bit it makes me so happy but this is such a cool hoya i can't get over those leaves this is a Hoya Matilde that's never done anything in all the time I've had it. So I, and I had it in water. So a little while ago I put it in soil and look, it's putting out new leaves already. It definitely prefers the soil. And I used like a special Hoya soil mix and it loves it. This really cool Hoya is called a Globe, Globulosa Hoya. It was $32, I got it from Cactus Club recently. And it ha also has those really cool rectangular leaves, just albeit a lot bigger than the, um, Rotunda flora and it's fuzzy on the backs of the leaves though not on the fronts of the leaves and I just love it but I don't know why it's doing this thing where it like just killed off this part of the stem this yellow part so you know there's an adjustment period for Hoyas too um so hopefully it can kind of get its bearings this is a Hoya latifolia and I paid $60 and these leaves get massive but it has not grown very much since I got it. So I'm not sure what's going on. I've tried a few different places and it it's grown a little bit, but not a lot. So I don't know what it's doing. This one's awesome. It's a Hoya Fungii and it's $18. I got it from Cactus Club. And I just love how like wonky the leaves are. It's just really interesting. Like I want all the leaves to look like this one. I don't know what kind of philodendron this is. Maybe a mammei or plowmanii or something. It was in water for a really long time and it was just dying slowly. So I just potted it up in some philodendron soil and it looks like it's trying to put out a leaf, which is kind of cool. I'm so tempted to help it, but I don't want to mess with it. Um, so I'm just gonna not mess with it because it's doing okay. <laughs> It's like, this struggle is real. Oh, this is such a cool one. This is a um, Hoya macrophylla, but it's pot of gold. So instead of variegation being on the outside of the leaves, like a, most Hoya macrophylla, it's on the outside. This one's on the inside. And look how huge this newest leaf is. Like, she's happy when you see, like, big leaf like that. But it looks like she killed off 
the stem. Sometimes that happens where the very tip of the Hoya, like the vine they put out, will kind of die for some reason. It's probably water related. So this one was $40. This is an Alocasia Maharani. Beautiful Alocasia. Um, looks like she has like a little bacteria spot there, but there's a lot of airflow in here. Um, but yeah, beautiful alocasia. This is another one of the jewel alocasias. This is a really beautiful Hoya Bella. It's a variegated one. And her her leaves are so lime green. I I haven't seen a Hoya Bella with such lime green leaves. Um, and it like, no matter where I put her, the leaves seem to be this really lime green color. It's beautiful. And she's variegated and she's grown quite a bit. It's such a such a beautiful Hoya. I'd love to find places around my house for all of these Hoyas, but right now they're just chilling in here. This is a, a cute little varicosum, filled under varicosum cutting, where I actually like broke it off of my main varicosum plant at the time and put it in here. And then this little tea kettle that I found thrifting, I just think this is like the prettiest tea ke kettle with all the little violets on it. I put it in sphagnum moss and it ended up turning it into like a self-watering pot. So just think that's the neatest thing. This is a begonia amphioxus and unsurprisingly it has not done well. These things need to be in more of like a terrarium setting and again the humidity stays around 65 and uh, it needs higher than that but it's still really cool begonia. The leaves stay small like this. I just think the little polka dots on it are adorable and the shape of the leaves are really neat so I mean she keeps going but just kind of stays small like that with just a few leaves and then back here is a jewel orchid and it looks like it's putting out a little flower for the first time ever so yeah. I almost didn't even notice that there's a Hoya bloom happening on this croniana. They're not open yet. I'm always curious how they smell because each Hoya has um, different blooms, but I can't believe it's winter time and it's, a lot of my Hoyas are still blooming. I mean, it's constant around here. This is my last plant shelf in the plant room. And then I have some plants in our guest bedroom and then that's it. So this big happy face pot I thrifted and I had to choose a plant for it, right? That was like, every time I look at that plant, it just makes me smile. And of course I had to choose this one. It's unusual. Um, I don't know a lot of people that have this plant, but it's a variegated goldfish plant. And the blooms look like little goldfish. And this one has not bloomed for me yet from what I can tell, but I'm very curious for when it does bloom one day. And it has grown so much. I can't express how much this plant has grown since I got it. It was like the tiniest little plant and it's just like thrown out a million vines and leaves. But um, you know, Goldfish plants aren't uncommon, but I've not seen many variegated goldfish plants. You can see like the cute little petite leaves, what it looks like. And it just, I just thought it was so fun with like the smiley face pot that I obviously, like of course thrifted for $1.99. Um, and it just looks like hair, so fun. So this fern up here is called a rabbit foot fern. And I have it in this like little skull pot that I got a long time ago. And it's called a rabbit foot fern because its roots do this like thing that looks like spider legs to me. It's a great little fern, like the issues are minimal. It does crisp up occasionally, but not bad at all. And really it's just the novelty of the little um, roots that is so cool. I just love it. And like the roots grow fast. Like look at them, it's awesome. This one's a blue star fern and the leaves are so blue and beautiful. And it really gets very minimal light over here in this corner. Um, and these plants seem to thrive regardless. This is another Scandapsis pictus exotica that I have one downstairs as well. It grows so fast, I have to trim it back all the time. This one back here, I purchased it as a variegated Hoya Chelsea, but apparently there's no such thing as a variegated Hoya Chelsea. So I think it's actually a Crimson Queen. Um, Hoya, which is amazing. Absolutely love it. It's grown a lot. I mean, some of the leaves do seem kind of Hoya Chelsea-ish. And then some of the leaves do look like a Crimson Queen. So I'm not really sure what's going on. And for some reason it grew this little like Oxalis in it and I liked it, so I left it. <laughs> and the Oxalis grows like crazy. Like the Oxalis has grown all out here and everything. Um, again, wild and free. This is a really cool succulent that I got, and it is a um, anemium sun cap. So pretty, 
Um, and even though it has a lot of light, it does get a little bit leggy, but I think that's just the way the succulent looks. And I'm okay with that. Like look how some of them are like having like little pink. So this is my Hoya Curtisii. We have a love-hate relationship. She's in a good mood lately, so I'm not complaining. Um, but if you get this plant, don't be alarmed if it struggles a little bit. Uh, she's definitely one of the higher maintenance Hoya Curtisii's, but she's so cute. I mean, look at her cute little petite leaves and just like the little spots on the leaves, just beautiful. And sometimes you can find these at big box shops too. So that would be the way to do it where you can find a deal on them. I think this is a variegated Oyerii maybe. And the leaves get so pink when it has enough light and it's so beautiful. This is your standard Hoya macrophylla. Unlike the pot of gold one that I have, the variegation on this one is on the outside. And it's grown a lot. I love the little owl pot it's been in forever. And I mean, look like it's put out vines this way it's put out vines all the way that way a lot of my hoyas are like really just treating this shelf as its own trellis which is fine by me i think that's awesome look this one's sun stress that's so cool and then this is a little uh Hoya, variegated hoya carnosa compacta that's never grown or done anything which is fine it's just cute like how it is this is, <laughs> this is a little bit of a sad story. Like I found this most beautiful um, Hoya Carnosa Compacta at a big box shop. I've had it for years and it recently got root rot and it's dying. So, you know, it's just one of those things that happens. Um, this one is a, another Ring of Fire. And she's a stunner. I think she was a propagation and just took off. So she's running out of room in there. I'm gonna have to do something for her. I have a lot of little random figurines that I find like while I'm thrifting, I think these little ducks are so cute. And then I also found this little duck pot when I was thrifting. This is a little um, Maranta or green prayer plant, which they're so cute. But this one has a lot of variegation and then it recently like killed off a bunch of the variegated leaves. So I'm hoping they come back. This leaf here has some of the variegation but I found it, got it on clearance for $2 from a big box shop. This is a variegated strawberry begonia. I've had a few of these and they just always end up turning brown and crisping up. So hopefully it makes it, but it's so pretty, isn't it? Like, I just love those pink leaves. This is a white wizard philodendron and it's so pretty, grows fast, has great um, variegation on the leaves. And then this one here is a silver sword philodendron. <laughs> Now, these philodendrons, I'm going to have to, like, do something with them soon because all three of them have outgrown their little spot. And they were all so tiny when I put them back here. Um, but they're ready for a new home. That's so... Gosh, look at those leaves on that silver sword. So silver and beautiful. Oh, and the little sloth pot is cute, too. This is another Hoya Croniana. This one's called Super Silver. And it's put out this one long vine. So, and it's called super silver because the leaves are super, super silvery. Look how pretty those are. Some more fun ones, just some little cacti. I'm not sure what kinds those are. This is a type of tephro cactus, similar to the paper spine cactus, but this one doesn't have the spines on it. Um, also called a pine cone cactus. You can see I paid $10 for this. And then this one over here is a type of euphorbia and it's putting out all sorts of little pups. This is a variegated gasteria. And I was so interested because I'd never seen a variegated one of these before and I found it $8.95 and I'm seeing them more and more, um, but mainly at like plant shops and greenhouses and nurseries. So keep an eye out for these. And that's so cool. I think this Hoya is a Hoya Calistophylla and she's got a big personality. She's growing everywhere, like trailing everywhere, vining everywhere, and her leaves are huge. She's just so happy, and she has fuzzy on the backsides of her leaves. Um, I just love this plant. I don't want to move it. I don't want to mess with it. It's so happy right here. I did repot her because she just was growing so much, and look how beautiful those leaves are. I can't get over it. It's definitely one of my favorites. Um, <laughs> big surprise. They're like all my favorite. So I went ahead and pulled this one out because I found this ZZ and it was just a regular ZZ was what it was priced as. And it actually has like variegation on all the leaves and the original cutting was a variegated leaf. But it's really struggled since I got it and it recently put out like these two leaves are just like pure white leaves. 
tips on Azizi. I don't know. Very interesting. So I um, am hoping it makes it because uh, variegated Azizis are expensive and it's just such a cool find. This is a Hoya Hushkeliana variegata. Beautiful plant. I think I got this one in Florida when I was doing, um, I was like went to a tropical plant expo or something and I saw this one. I was like, oh my gosh. And the lady at the store who there were hundreds of Hoyas there, she said this one was her favorite right now. And I have to agree with her. This plant is beautiful. It's so like such a great grower. I love the shape of the leaves. It's so unique. And I think it looks cute in this little pot that I thrifted. This one back here is called a Hoya Parasitica Black Margin and it has black around the leaves if you take a peek there. And I just really enjoy like the veining of the leaves. You can see some detail on them and it's a really good grower. So this is a plant I got recently when I was doing like a birthday plant shopping for a gratitude plant. And I'd never seen one like this before. It's like a Haworthia, but it's completely see-through like a Cooperi, but it's lime green, like just totally lime green. So of course I had to add her to my collection for a few dollars. She wasn't expensive, like eight bucks or something. Go on, get out of there. These Hoyas are wild and free. So I believe this is called a bread loaf cactus. They're somewhat uncommon, but I love it. It's just like a little loaf of bread hanging out. Then back here is a Hoya pubicalix. I mean, look at all those vines it's pushing out. Pubicalix are just a beast. They are so awesome. I love them. So down here, there's only a couple of plants. Um, there's not much light down here. And I think this anthurium could use more light because it's actually a chocolate anthurium, which you don't see them that often. Um, and it's called chocolate or black beauty because the leaves are typically like a chocolatey brown color. And so is the bloom. And this bloom, it looks surprisingly red. They're normally like this color, like this is the newest leaf and it's that typical chocolate brown color like you would see with the anthurium, but I think if it got more light, it, it would turn actually like a really beautiful dark brown color. Um, but I'm excited to see it blooming and putting out new leaves, even though it's in a lower light area. This one down here is the new Aglionema from Costa Farms, Aglionema spathonema. And look at these, I just love the leaves. I'm starting, Aglionemas are really starting to grow on me. These are the plants I got on my latest plant shopping trip and I'm going to treat them before I introduce them to my other plants. But they're really interesting. This is um, an Aglionema pictum tricolor. Um, peacock. So it has elongated leaves and it has that beautiful um, like camouflage color. This is a Syngonium panda galaxy. I'd never seen most of these plants before either, by the way. So that's why I'm putting them in this plant tour, even though they're not exactly ready yet, because I'm so excited about them. Um, and they weren't expensive from where I got them. They're $16 for this one. This Pictum tricolor peacock was $31 which is insane. This is an Epipremnum gigantium variegata. So these leaves just get really huge and stay really long. And I don't even think they fenestrate. I don't know. Um, 26 for that one. This is an orange marmalade philodendron, and it's a hybrid of Prince of Orange and Painted Lady. And I love it. And I found it for $10.99. Can you believe that? And it has beautiful variegation on the leaves. It has that like very orange color. I just, I'm so excited. And this is the last one I found. They're a little crumpled because I put them in my backpack because I was um, flying home with them. But this is a philodendron Bob C, 10.99, and it's variegated. Look at it. So I'm going to give it a lot of light and see if I can get that variegation to pronounce a little bit more. But I thought for 10.99 for a Bob C, that was such a steal. So last up are just a few of these plants that I have in our guest bedroom. They are all plants that I found at big box shops. This is the Baltic Blue and it has grown so much. And as you can see, it's like trailing all the way down there. It's been absolutely amazing. This is the Monstera Stanleyana Albo. Uh, it was another Costa Farms trending tropical. And I've had this plant before and it hasn't done well for me, but this one has done really well. You know, it does do the crisping on the white part, but most of the leaves don't have that. And it just has some nice little you know, spotted variegation. So that one um, has been a nice surprise. Isn't this cute? It's like a little fireplace. It doesn't put out any heat or anything, but it just looks like a little fireplace. I think it's so cute. This is a Hoya Bersinae that I found at a big box shop. 
And this one blooms so much. Uh, you can see she actually has some nice blooms on her and they smell amazing. But this is a really fabulous Hoya. And then last up is this Monstera Peru. I do not have a lot of success with Monstera Peru. I've had a couple of them. Now this one has done actually surprisingly well and it's grown a lot as you can see. And I love the Monstera Peru. Like I'm so glad that this one is, do is doing well because I love the like texture of the leaves. I just think it's so beautiful. I love the color of it. Um, and this one was a trending tropicals plant that I got from a big box shop. All of these plants were $20 in this room. So yep, that's it. That's the last plant. Thank you so much for watching my plant tour. I really enjoyed sharing it with all of you. And I post about once or twice a week planty videos. So subscribe if you'd like to see those show up in your newsfeed. And we also have a fantastic community on Instagram. All right, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day and that I get to see you soon. Bye.